Hi, welcome back to the Keto's YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about something that I talk a lot in customer calls and I figured that it's better to create it if everybody's asking the same question. It's better to just create a quick YouTube video where you can learn about it even if you haven't talked to us. Uh, and that's enter ID authentication to Wi-Fi. And basically uh, you kind of have two ways of doing it. There is the translating what you're doing on-prem, which is probably username and password. You just enter the username and password and, and that works. However, with cloud and Windows 11, the protocol that was used, which is MSChap v2, it's being deprecated and that's because it's not as secure and you know it uses LDAP and all that stuff. So you basically have to use EAP TTLS PAP, which basically creates a TLS tunnel, cryptographic tunnel, and then the password is sent inside that tunnel. Um, unfortunately, Apple devices do not default to this um, so basically you have to create a Wi-Fi profile, which if you're using an MDM, either Jamf, Intune, anything like that, super easy. You just create that profile and it works no problem. However, if you have like unmanaged cell phones or stuff like that, that people bring their own devices, it might be a problem, not hard to, to solve. We, we have, uh, here, we, we have a way to create the profile. So if we go here to the radius, uh, policy setup. Also super easy to set up in, in the policies. So if we go back to my policies here, you can see it's as simple as basically creating your access policy. And I'm going to link a video that goes through all the setup. It's five minutes. Um, but basically you just enable IDP delegation and enable password authentication. And that's going to tell us to go to enter ID and ask if that's the right password. But if we go back here to Wi-Fi profiles, in the Wi-Fi profiles, we allow you to basically come in here and create a profile. Let's say we're going to call it student Wi-Fi. We're going to enter the SSID. This has to exactly match what you're doing because you're basically telling the device when you see this network, connect to it, use WPA2, or you can change it to WPA3. And in here, we're going to do TTLS. And this is going to allow you to allow them to enter their username and password. So you create the profile in here. I have already created it. And you can go in here and email a specific user, send them a, an email saying like, Hey, here's a profile. This is how you connect. And we have videos and text tutorials on how to connect that are sent with the email. So they just have to follow it less than a minute and they're in. The other option is email all your users at once, or they can just come here ad hoc, download, authenticate with their entry ID and download the, the policy. Well, this works and it's kind of like a very similar experience. Once you have this set up, you know, they just come in and enter the username and password. If you're already moving to the cloud and you're already kind of like doing this major change to your network, I would recommend looking at, at something more modern, like EAP TLS, which is basically certificate based authentication. And I know certificates have like this bad rap of being very hard and everything, but with modern tools like Intune, Either, either Intune PKI or, or EZCA, which connects to Easy Radius. Uh, it has been so simple. I actually have a video that I did that in 20 minutes I was able to set up from start to finish that I'm going to link down in the description. You can basically create this certificate, issue them to all the devices. Even for on for your unmanaged devices, you can create a certificate policy, same as we just did with the network profiles. And it just makes it way easier. And the best part is that it becomes kind of magical. The user doesn't have to enter their username and password. They just open their laptop, open their cell phone, and it magically connects. The reason for that is the cell phone slash laptop goes, gets a certificate that the MDM tells them to get, and then it uses that to connect. So no longer the user entering the wrong password or anything like that. So not only are you making it more secure, but you're also reducing calls of like, Hey, my Wi-Fi is not working. And then it's like, Oh, the, did you enter the right password? Oh, I forgot that I switched it. So it, it's kind of like the way that I recommend, but either way, both of them worked. There's just these minor tweaks that you have to do for it to work with the new protocols. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know as well. I'm going to put the link to where you can basically schedule a call with one of our engineers and we can go into more depth into what exactly you need.